Mars is at opposition this weekend, and in honor of this event, the Hubble Space Telescope recently snapped a picture of the red planet, and here to talk to us about that is Dr. Jennifer Wiseman. Uh, Dr. Wiseman, so looking at this image of Mars that Hubble snapped, um, it's such a stunning image. It's it's really got sort of a strange look to it. Um, can you tell me just what we're seeing in this image? What features of Mars does this image capture? And, and what is that sort of blue tint around the edge? Certainly. So Hubble captures a wide range of colors, which allows us to see lots of interesting features on Mars. In this new image we've just taken of Mars with the Hubble telescope, we can see that large orange uplands plains region in the center there. Um, that's known as Arabia Terra. If you look closely, you can see the Cassini crater there in the middle. Um, we can also see those darker bedland uh, uh, regions um, to the south. You can see clouds around the whole uh, planet, and that's what you're seeing in that kind of wispy, bluish white color. Off to the right hand side, you can see those clouds surrounding an extinct volcano and you can also see the polar regions clearly. So uh, this image actually gives us a, a huge variety of features that we can see. Now, NASA has uh, orbiters around Mars, they have rovers on Mars, so this, this isn't the highest resolution image that NASA has of the red planet. Why is it still beneficial for Hubble to take pictures of the red planet? Why, why did you take this picture? So NASA has a terrific suite of scientific probes studying Mars right now. Uh, we have these rovers that are on the planet sampling soils and so forth. We have orbiters that are really telling us a lot about the atmosphere and the surrounding conditions of Mars. With telescopes like Hubble, we actually get a global view of the planet. And we need all of this information together to give us a full picture of what's going on on Mars now and what Mars was like in the past as well. Can you talk a little more about maybe what Hubble can teach scientists about Mars? Well, Hubble has been operating for over 26 years now. And that means we have a long time baseline of looking at planets in the solar system, including Mars. Because of this wealth of information, we can see how the planet as a whole changes over time. For uh, planets like Jupiter, we've seen its atmosphere change, that red spot shrinking. For Saturn, we've seen things like the aurorae on the poles come and go. We've even used Hubble to discover new moons around Pluto that we didn't know about before. That informed the New Horizons probe mission that recently passed Pluto and was able to take pictures of those moons. For Mars, we've seen dust storms in the past. When we could see the planet as a whole, we could see how the climate affects the planet as a whole and see how that changes over time. It's just terrific to be able to look at Mars uh, one year or one day and see it looking uh, in conditions that appear rather clear and then look at it at another time and see it uh, covered in dust. It shows us that Mars is a very dynamic planet and we need that long time baseline that Hubble has given us to really understand these dynamics. Yeah, so I think a lot of people, when they think about images from Hubble, they really think about those very deep space images, images of galaxies and, you know, very distant objects. But I think you just illustrated that Hubble has actually taught scientists a lot about the things going on sort of right here at home in our solar system. Certainly, because we've been monitoring the solar system with Hubble for decades now, we've learned that the solar system is active. We have comets crashing into planets. Uh, who can forget comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 in the early 1990s that uh, crashed into Jupiter? Uh, we've seen impacts on other planets. We've seen these aurorae coming and going. We've even been studying these minor planets, very small bodies. We've actually also discovered evidence um, that there are oceans under the ices of moons around planets. We believe there are oceans under the ice on Europa and Ganymede, and Hubble has been a big player in those types of discoveries. So by uh, studying not only the planets, but now discovering moons around those planets and discovering some of the characteristics of those moons as well as the planets, Hubble has been a major player in our understanding of the solar system. We recently announced discovering 
a moon of a dwarf planet. Uh, Maki Maki um, has a moon and it is fabulous that we've been able to see something as small as 100 miles across from the distant Kuiper Belt uh, outer solar system region. And with Hubble, we're able to do those kinds of discoveries. So Hubble has been very busy is the lesson that we've learned today. Yes, and we plan for Hubble to be in operation for uh, many years to come. We are looking, of course, not only at the solar system, but at uh, beautiful things happening outside our solar system. The reason Hubble is operating so well is because of the suite of uh, astronaut servicing missions over the years that enable us to continue studying star forming regions, uh, regions of stellar death, even distant galaxies. And we look forward to Hubble being joined in 2018 by the James Webb Space Telescope, fabulous new facility. These two uh, major observatories, hopefully operating at the same time for, for some period of time, will give us a wonderful uh, understanding of not only the solar system, but the ancient distant universe as well. Space.com.